Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. Today is different. We are at one of the nicest, no joke, one of the nicest gun ranges in the entire nation. It's called the Civilian Marksmanship Program Range here in Talladega. I just want to show you this place. It's unreal. Anyway, let's go check it out. I'm here with my buddy Trent. What's up? Firearms in the clubhouse. In the club. First time for any of y'all? Are you shooting? We'd like to. If you'd like to shoot, you can slip in there. We just started a video that's required. The safety, there, the safety course? Okay, cool. Man, look at this. So there's the shop. All right, so there's a shop indoors here. And then, check out the long distance range. Look at this, man. It's like some kind of country club. Well, look at this. That's nice. It's a 600 yard range. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. I'm with Steve, and Steve makes suppressors, right? That's right. What's the name of the company? Soteria. Soteria Suppressors. Soteria Firearm Suppression. Okay, this is something we've been wanting to do forever. Um, this is a good old boy Alabama deal. I've contacted Steve, he's contacted me. He likes the high speed camera. I like the concept of see-through suppressors. So we, we worked out a little deal here, wouldn't you say? That's right. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna fire our suppressors with through <clears throat> using a cast acrylic as a casing, because we can get 8,000 PSI strength out of cast acrylic, so we can fire them without them shattering on us. And we can actually see what transpires inside the suppressor once you know the, the round leaves the barrel and the compressed gases behind it you know, come out of the barrel and create the pressure wave and the ignition of the gases. So we get to see what is actually happening in there. So there's a few things that make sound. The first thing is that compressed gas. Right, that, well the pressure, the pressure the wave. The pressure wave. And the second thing is the interaction of the heat with heat. the cold air. Yeah, the ambient air, that's right. The ambient air. And then you do still have another uh, sound component that should be downrange and that would be the bullet breaking the, the velocity. The shock know, the, wave as the bullet's yeah, going. The, the speed of sound. And so you're going to ground truth this first, right? Right. We want to shoot five shots. We're going to take five readings. First shot will be louder than the second shot. will be louder than the third shot. Okay. So it's going to get quieter and quieter and that's your theory it is because it's purging out, the oxygen. Third, fourth, and fifth should be basically about the same. Got it. We're cool. hoping to get that below that 140 mark. Yes! <laughs> I can tell that reduction. What happened? What was the high fives about over here? 138.5. 138.5. So you're trying to go below 140? That's right. If you get below 140, you're hearing safe. Really? So what we want to do is we want to get it below 140 so we protect the people out and our men and women in arms and our police. So what you're so You see how much it drops after the first shot? Yeah. Really? All right, so he's putting the uh, the, the way, first. That's hot, okay. That's hot. <laughs> Did you learn that the hard way? <laughs> it's amazing how barrels heat up. Right, 
Okay, so I'm seeing areas that are cluttered, and right. I would that would lead me to believe it would be hard for the gases to get out. Right. And then I'm seeing other areas that are like just cavernous. Right. I mean, we want to slow the gas down, you know, contain as much as we can from that initial impact. Uh, so the idea is to contain with these big pockets yeah, and you, to slow it down with these. You got, you got two components there you got to account for. One is like an impact and the other one's a temperature. And what do you mean by impact? Well, the impact of the pressure wave, okay? Okay. You know, it's going to impact mainly this stanchion here and this one here. Yeah. Okay, and one reason we use the, the, this design of our muzzle brake is because it actually has a baffle in it as well. So it actually breaks up the gas, it breaks up the pressure wave. So you got, you're diffusing some of it here and you're diffusing some of it there. So you're diffusing it in the volume, but you're containing it by the lower yeah. effusion rate through all these baffles. Think here. of it like this, is we break down the velocity, we break it, okay? We slow it down, you know, so that it, it can't just rush out of here all of a sudden, out of the suppressor all of a sudden. So we break it, if you will, with the brake lines and the muzzle brake. And then the gas diffuses at a slower rate through these baffles here. Okay. Right. Okay. And, and the, the double helix is just to to create turbulence and, and the gas actually kind of fights against itself because it's going in, in two oh, directions. Oh, so, so if directions. you rush around this diamond here, for example, so if the gas rushes around this diamond, it's going to collide. Right. It's going to kind of burn against itself. So are you trying to slow the gases down? Or are you just trying to like, down, let it somewhere, and, let it sit and rest? And let it let it try to burn itself out before it exits the suppressor. That's the goal. And how did you arrive at this design? Just, you know, sitting around scratching your head. So did you did you build something and then shoot it and then see if your number your DB went up or down? Yes, I mean, you know, this all started uh, back in 2014. My wife and I, Cheryl and I went to Israel. Uh, while we we're in Israel, we're going through all these checkpoints over there and all these guard stations and every checkpoint we went through, they're equipped with assault rifles with suppressors on them. I mean, even the sidearms had suppressors on them. We go to the temple and the, the, the guards and military in it, and it even had sidearms with suppressors on it. So we're on the way back from Israel and I tell Cheryl, I said, I'm going to build a suppressor. She said, what's a suppressor? Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, well, it's a, like a silencer for guns. You know, the silencers are misnomer. Right. And she said, what do you know about guns? And I said, I don't know anything, but I'm going to learn. And the first ones we built were very primitive. And then we began to to really kind of put in our mind exactly what's happening. And we found some slow motion photography of what happens when you fire a gun. From on, the, on the outside. Yeah, and, you know, just a, a you know gun that's unsuppressed handguns mostly and you get to see what's actually taking place so what can you do to contain that you gotta remember though you reach a limit that you're not gonna do you're not gonna suppress the decibels anymore I mean you're gonna reach a point to where you're suppressing 30 32 decibels you know on what you would say a common length uh, of a suppressor that's when I say a common length I guess what I'm looking for is you know, something that's comfortable for the marksman, especially if like our military and our law enforcement. You don't want a suppressor that's, you know, longer than the barrel of your gun. So you want to kind of contain it to the point and, and reach a point with the smallest suppressor you can to protect, you know, the military or the policeman, you know, that's having to use that firearm, you know, protect their ears. That's the whole goal is hearing protection, okay? And, you know, but you reach a point to where you're not going to get any better, you know, unless you go longer and longer and longer. So is it the, the length to diameter, like the L to D ratio? It comes back to capacity. You know, it all comes back to capacity. I think, you know, you can get larger in diameter, but it helps to go longer in length. Let me ask you this. How did you initially create the first one? Like, I've seen baffle designs that are modular. I mean, you, you can put baffles in there and stack them up and then you just screw the can on. Yeah. Why didn't you go with that design? Well, we wanted something um, that would be easy for say one of our troops out in the field, if they wanted to break it down and clean it, or you know, a sportsman, you know, such a day. That's but why we, you went with the monolithic. So we went with the, the monocore design, if you will. And uh, we, all this is precision CNC machined. So is that more expensive to make? It is more expensive to make. I mean, you reach a point to where, you know, you change the manufacturing design as you go into volume, but you keep the same design. You just change the manufacturing process, let me put it that way. Got it. All right, this is a, uh, 
this is different than most suppressors that I've seen. My dad actually worked a machine shop one time that made components for, I, I, I can only assume it was one of your competitors, but they had these baffles that you would stack in there and you'd stack them all up and it would expand and contain within that. But I had not seen a monolithic core design like this. I mean, is it common? Is it common to have a monolithic piece in the center? There are other um, mono cores out there. Uh, everyone has kind of their own idea or concept or design. Uh, we just work through uh, trial and error and tried to apply some science to what we're doing, the manufacturing science, to what we're trying to accomplish with the firearm. So the so sound is a logger, like when you say dB, like we decreased it by 4 dB, sound is a logarithmic, or let's put it this way, so dB is a logarithmic measure. So if you decrease the sound by 4 dB, that's not like four percent. It's right, right. Because every not. six dB is I double, mean, right? If you um, if you drop the decibel level from a firearm by thirty decibel, you probably improve your hearing protection for you by two hundred percent. Okay. I mean that. See, so it doesn't really right way out that way. But but that's basically what we're talking about now. Another key factor with suppressors is for these applications, like snipers use them. One of the key things for a sniper is to hide signature, hide his position, if you will, and that the flame that you see coming out there is a very key part of containing that that ignition there, especially at night, of course, but also for for hunters as well. The moment we've been waiting for. Here we go. That's a PTFE seal. Steve would like to say something. <laughs> I can say full disclosure here. We've never fired. The 308 with a cast acrylic suppressor before. I think it's going to break. I do. So, my my guess is if it does fail, that we're going to get a failure right here near the thread on the back or the front, and that's because of the uh, the stress concentration. What kind of thread did you use? Is it, is it a sharp tooth thread? Well, it's a truncated thread. It's a fine thread. Uh, hopefully it won't, but if it, if it does, we're going to get some great high speed, hence the Lexan. There we go. I think it broke where I thought it would. Is the weapon clear? It's, yeah. We're safe. Barrel's clear? Yeah. It's exactly where it broke. Broke at that thread. Yep. Yeah. My engineering professor didn't lie to me. Hold on, this is this is reverse. Ready? Ready. Okay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Did you save it already? Not yet, I'm about to. Rule number one of high speed, save it before you gawk at it. We can stop it right before the sleeve comes off. <laughs> you want you wanna stop it before the sleeve comes off? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's acrylic. We know. Yeah, I mean, what we accomplish what we want to do at that point. Yeah, so okay. we, we wanted to see what happened to the gases inside the acrylic tube. The fact that it came off had to do with axial stress. Like, it, once it pressurized that tube, it's pulling the whole can. And those threads just couldn't handle that, right? That's right. So. There it is. So we did what we wanted. It's right there. Yeah, keep, keep going. Play it slow, Trent. Go, yes, go, go back. That's what we wanted right there. Oh. That's what you want to see right there. Look away. Okay, so just play it right there. Just let it play. That is awesome. Man, that is so awesome. I have mean, you ever I, Have I, you ever seen that? I've never seen that. I've never seen anybody do that before. I've never seen anybody do that. Mumford people. What's Mumford people? Mumford, USA. Mumford, Alabama. Mumford, USA. I don't understand the reference. We'd be rednecks. <laughs> <laughs> but we designing stuff.
Okay, this is design number two? <laughs> some, some country boy from Mumford, Alabama, right? <laughs> okay. All right, so what's the, this is the, the second shot. The difference is uh, we've got more capacity here is what it comes out to. We still have a uh, uh, triangle matrix design here for the strength, and we do have a double brake line here, and we are using the muzzle brake that diffuses all the way around the brake rather than just in one direction. But you have more volume on this we one, right? We have more capacity, got more volume here. And, and what does more volume do for you? There again, it's containment. You know, it's all about containing the gases as much as you can. And it, sh it should give you a little bit better reading on DB. Uh, the bigger you go, the more containment you got. I mean, it's pretty simple math. So. I, I have another engineering prediction. Okay. If we have, so is, is this diameter larger? Yes, it is. If this diameter is larger, we're going to have more force pulling the can right. off. The suppressor core is also larger. Okay. okay. I see what you're saying. So you're saying the suppressor core is fixed to so, the flash suppressor. Yeah, you're thinking Bernoulli's. I'm not. You know, I'm you just thinking larger of, diameter it increases the pressure. Go ahead, tell me. You know, greater surface area with the velocity slows down, but the greater the surface area, cross sectional area, you know, like in a Bernoulli's equation, you know, the higher the pressure. Right. You know, so may be the case. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. It, this I I just I just want to make another engineering prediction. Um, first of all, we're going to get the data off of the, the suppressor, but my guess is that the can's going to come off faster because we have a large diameter. Do you have a, a guess? Uh, I'm guessing you're wrong. Okay. You know, I'll bet you a Coke on it. A Coke? <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Bet you a Coke. So we're going to lay the high speed side by side and see which one comes okay. off uh, first. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Man. God, this is fun. This is really fun. All right. Ready for the shot. All right. Boy, I sure am thirsty. I mean, oh, man, you're thirsty. <laughs> oh, I owe somebody a coat, don't I? I owe somebody a coat. But that's a good thing. Hey. All right. I owe him a coat. What, what kind do you drink, man? I take regular Coke Classic, dude. All right, man, I'll hook you up. I like the hard stuff. I'll hook you, I'll hook you up. Yeah, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, sir. Uh, yeah, see, the sweet taste of victory. I mean, what can you say? It's lonely at the top. You know? <laughs> okay, so the one we're about to do is something you actually sell. That's right. And you've never seen it like this. Never have. Okay, cool. So this is a 223. All right. And the idea here is to contain the gases in the back and then stop it from exiting with that diamond pattern in the front. David, we're, we're good to go, man. Fire and hold. Fire and hold. Fire and hold. Okay, I am personally excited about this particular one because it's got like this claw built into it. Mm -hmm. And that claw kind of looks like it's going to uh, grab some of that gas and not let it go. So I'm pretty pumped about that. You ready? Yep. Ready to fire. Darn right. hole. <laughs> there it went. <laughs> Why did you tell me? I did. I said full disclosure, and you went on with the testing. He jinxed us. Because I said it was my favorite. He said I love this because this has got claw. It's my favorite design, and you you knew it was gonna. How did you know it was gonna fail? In all seriousness. Well, it was a smaller diameter 
on that 308. It works well on the 223, but on the 308 we need more capacity than that. That's a 30, that's 35 millimeter suppressor. It needs to be like a 41 millimeter suppressor. So, so you seriously knew that was going to happen before it happened? Honestly, I did not. Okay. But I, I seriously suspected it would based on an earlier test we did at another time. Just for giggles, we're gonna do one without the uh, the acrylic on it, just to see what happens. It's gonna act like a really, really bad muzzle brake. Hang on, Ready, Trent? Yep. I'm not. Oh, that'd be bad, man. Especially when you're not. <laughs> All right. Go. Ready? Yep. Far and hole. And that's a wrap. Good? If you've never considered subscribing to Smarter Every Day, don't do it unless this video has earned it because the next videos are so stinking rad. If you didn't like this video, you're not gonna like anything else I do, but oh my gosh, the next couple videos are sweet. Oh, they're so sweet.